All right, welcome. This is Apostle Tom, and I'm excited for today's broadcast. We're going to be talking about the keys to breakthrough, and I have an amazing guest with me, my friend, Prophet Rich Vera. And it's uh, always an honor to have you, Thank you. Uh, here in Washington State from Orlando and the cold state. Um, <laughs> I wanted to talk to you about uh, the keys to breakthrough because uh, I think many of you, 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 you want to, when I say breakthrough, I mean, I believe that God has promises. He has a purpose, a future, a hope, things that he is destined for your life. It's just in general, things that he's destined for all believers' lives. And then there's things that he's specifically destined for your uh, life, your marriage, your family, your ministry. Uh, but if I'm honest, I see many believers, it looks like their dreams are what we would call you know, a pipe dream. It's just, it's just a painting on the wall. It's not a reality in their life. And uh, I want to talk to you about the keys to breakthrough because that's what you need to possess which are all keys of revelation or anointings, things that work together to cause you to be able to come into something. And so there were things that Israel, let's say, for example, did not possess when they were in the wilderness, and that's why they didn't go in. But Caleb and Joshua did possess them, and they entered in. And so I want to break down some of these keys because I do meet other people who it seems like everything that they see, they possess. And I'm talking about seeing, meaning before it's ever physically seen, they say, I'm going to do this. And you go, well, that sounds crazy. You sound like a madman. Uh, maybe to some, but they caught it in the spirit first. And then they possessed a keys of breakthrough. The ability to take what they, they, they feel burdened in the spirit to have, and they know how to go and possess it. So, so. I want you to have those keys. So we're going to talk about a couple of them. And I want you to watch until the very end. At the last one, uh, I would say we're going to go through some ones, some deeper ones. Some of the ones you might say, yeah, I've heard that before. But um, we're talking to someone who, who, is, who is, I've watched bring a reality of things because of the anointing of breakthrough on their life that um, I don't think you have on your life. Um, and I want it to be on your life. He wants it to be on your life. God wants it to be on your life. But as we come to that last one, the last point we're going to make, um, this is where many people stumble. They, they don't realize the importance of that last key. So I want you to watch into the end. You can also put comments, questions, and we're going to take a moment at the end to answer some of those for you. So um, when God wants to do something in someone's life, I believe this, he'll institute a season. He'll institute a season. He wants you to possess something new in your life. And uh, in that, there are keys to be able to, the, the season's really a test. Um, the enemy uses a trap. There's grace that's needed. Um, there are certain things that's needed in your life to be able to um, go ahead and uh, uh, pass through that season so you can come into your promise. But those things that you need to do in between those things, I call them, that's the breakthrough is, is you get, you know, it's like a clock. We talk about, you know, you go to seven, you go to 11, you go to 30 and boom, breakthrough, you, you, you open it. So we're going to talk about the key things that are needed to be able to possess the promise. So uh, many believers, they don't have this. They can say they have it, but they don't see the reality of the things. Katie and I, God said, do this, do that, do this, do that. We've seen all those things happen in our lives. Whether, with the minute, whether it's in the ministry, finances, our health, whatever it is. It could be natural. It could be spiritual. It could be relational. There's keys to breakthrough. And we want you to possess them so that everything God has purpose for your life will manifest. Amen. All right, so um, very, again, honored to have you because you. I've watched that on your life. You say something, say, I'm going to do this. But there's, well, people will try to do the same thing. I'm going to do this. And then it never <laughs> manifests. Yeah. And there's a bunch of reasons why it doesn't manifest. Um, let's help the people with, with some of those ones. Absolutely. So what are some of the things that you, you, you recognize maybe early on or some, at some point you recognize, no, this is a key to breakthrough? 
Yeah, you know, it's, it's a few things, as you mentioned. Breakthrough is progressive. Mm. Okay, breakthrough is not an, an, an act that happens in the now suddenly, you know. It, it manifests suddenly when the timing is right, you know, but it takes usually a journey. And that's when people uh, get impatient because they want, when I feel breakthrough should happen, that's when I should get it. So you're actually saying first key is understand that it's not a moment, it's a season. Breakthrough is not a miracle. Because then you, if you think it's a miracle, you get discouraged. Exactly. Now, when the timing has been fulfilled for the breakthrough to come, when you've it happens so fast. Finally passed through the door. Exactly. But it didn't start there. Exactly. You know, that it might look like a miracle if you don't know the journey of the one that's been going through it. Yeah. Right? So people will say, how'd you get a breakthrough so fast? Well, it's been 10 years waiting for it. That's if you call fast. Or it could be according to your understanding and the guide that you have. Okay? Uh, there's a scripture that I want to share that really kind of like talks about this. The book of Micah, chapter 2, verse uh, 13 says, the breaker is come up before them. Okay? Now, so breakthrough on the breaker, it, the breaker is breakthrough. But I'm going to show you who's the breaker. They have broken up and have passed through the gate and they're going out by it. And their king shall pass before them and the Lord on the head of them. So here it's saying that there is the Lord of the breakthrough. Breakthrough is not a happening that takes place just because or maybe even as a result of just prayer. Even though all these things lead you towards it. But they have to be the Lord that takes you into breakthrough. Come on. All right. Now, there's many manifestations of the Lord, okay? He is Savior, He is Healer, He is God, He is Messiah, many things. But there's one uh, mantle that Jesus carries. And that mantle is the mantle of the breaker. But listen, the mantle of the Lord of hosts. And the Lord of hosts is the Lord that is in charge of the armies that go and make things happen. Okay? That's a manifestation. So when the Lord of hosts, when you have the revelation, of you, when you have tapped and joined hands with the Lord of hosts, with the ones that is the captain of the armies of heaven, the one that has the power to break through any barrier, you'll be led into you'll be led into breakthrough. Mm. Why? Because Jesus, the Savior, cannot take you into breakthrough alone. I'm not talking about the person, I'm talking about the manifestation, the revelation that we have in our spirit. Okay? Jesus, a healer, or so on. You have to come to a place where Jesus becomes the Lord of hosts in your life, the breaking in your life. That's the number one step. Awareness, consciousness of a different mantle upon Christ, upon mm. your life. Okay, because when the Bible talks about the breaker is come, and it's not talking about the healer or just a savior, it's talking about somebody that comes with some power and energy to break you through. That's Jesus, the captain of the host, the fighter. Because breakthrough happens when the angelic host have been released to fight on your behalf. Mm. Okay, now I'm painting a picture here of a revolution that happens in your spirit by cause of revelation of what Christ is operating in you in what manifestation. Same Christ, different manifestation. If you want to be healed, Christ the Savior is not the manifestation you need. It's Christ the healer. Mm. Because now I'm talking about the same Jesus, the same Christ, but different mantles upon him. Okay? If you want to be saved, Jesus the healer cannot help you much. You have to find Christ the Savior. So for the breaker to happen, the breaker is connected to an anointing. And an anointing is connected to the anointed one because the Bible says in Isaiah that the anointing destroys the yoke of bondage. Now that's a violent fighting expression of the Christ, 
okay? When the anointing comes to destroy, there is a battle in the spiritual world that causes the angels of God to break and to destroy the thing that was holding you captive. That's breakthrough, okay? So what I'm trying to say is this breakthrough releases a different host of angels to walk with you and to lead you into victory of spiritual fights that you cannot obtain by yourself. Mm. So breakthrough is the manifestation and the winning and the overcoming of spiritual fights that you cannot do on your own, that you need a host of angels that will fight those fights and get you through it. Mm. So breakthrough is fighting, but breakthrough is victory. Okay? In no matter what area. So when I said it's a journey because it takes a journey for the soul of men and the spirit of men to become aware of who's with you. There is a story in the Bible when um, Joshua was coming from war and was resting under a tree. And the Bible says that an angel appeared with a sword in hand. Joshua had no idea it was an angel and stood up, pulled his sword out of his place, ready to fight. And he says, are you with us or are you against us? Now, the angel gave a very unusual answer because he could have said, I am with you, yes or no. But his answer was, neither. King James says, huh, nay. Meaning, I'm not what you're waiting. But he says, but I'm a captain of the host of heaven. And I'm here to deliver this. That was the angel of breakthrough. Because the angel of the Lord manifests himself as and the captain of the armies that fight for you to get what you want to get. And if you look at the like of Joshua, there was breakthrough that took place. So there is a breakthrough he needed. That he needed in that moment. Was the host of heaven's arm, because he was, he, he was going to go to war. He exactly. needed a war angel. Yeah. So that was the key of he his He needed breakthrough. a breakthrough and victory in that specific battle. But if it was in his marriage or in finances or in yeah. health, it would have shown up as something else. Exactly, exactly. You know, so the angels that bring breakthrough are angels that fight on behalf of your need. Okay? Whether it's financial, whether it's marriage, whether it's battle. So because there are different kinds of angels. So, so the, understand that all breakthrough is attached to angelic activity in the life of the person. The deliverance of the grace, the power. Absolutely from heaven is going to come and, through absolutely. a messenger, a deliverer of absolutely. heaven's grace. Breakthrough is attached to angels. If Christians don't understand the operation of angels, they will never understand breakthrough. One of the most misunderstood subjects in Christianity is angels because they, 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 they think angels are just, you know, they come over only just to, to protect you from an accident or to, or to keep you from being robbed. Yeah, there's all kinds of angels, but there are angels of breakthrough that are a sign from God just to manifest and bring you into breakthrough. So I want to speak to this and ask you to speak to this. So um, a big issue is going back to the possessing of something. Uh, many believers don't possess a lot of what's available because they don't know what's available. So I want to just speak to that real quick. So you just, because you just made that statement. Yeah. So, so uh, you want protection. Well, that's a natural, that's the lowest level of, any kind of promise. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, hey, I don't want to die. So instead of actually looking at what God wants you to actually possess with your life, your goal is just don't die. And so, yeah, let the angels protect me on this long drive because I don't want to die. But what, what, what people don't do is go and look at the word of God and be provoked by what God's word says is his intent, his will, so that we can go possess that will in our own, that will, his intent, his purpose would manifest in our lives. So for example, if you think God wants you to be poor, Christians are supposed to be poor. We have a couple of verses that people probably go to. The son of man has no place to lay his head, all kind of several things that cause Christians to say, oh, the believer is supposed to be poor. So by your revelation, yeah. You no longer try to possess kingdom wealth. Absolutely. Right? So the, I think there's something there with our revelation of the word, which is Christ, that will cause us to be provoked if we had a revelation of 
kingdom wealth, scriptures that talk about being the head and not the tail, if we have, a, if we're provoked by, well, I'm not the head, I'm pretty much always the tail, but the, God says his intent is the blessing would yeah. cause me to be the head. Now I have a burden for something I don't see as a reality in my life. You're saying when you get that revelation, which is the word of God, the promise of God, the intent and will of God in the earth, what he wants to be, not what he is. That's why we have to pray, let it be done because heaven has a reality that's not earth's reality, but there he's looking for a person to pull down heaven into the earth, which is us, supposed to be, but we have to get a catch a vision of what heaven's like. Let your kingdom come, let your, it's nice, but we don't even know what heaven's like. Yeah. Heaven's filled with whole people, meaning healed, no sick people, yeah. no, no demonized people, no, to be honest, no dead people, right? <laughs> They're all living. Uh, no poor people. Yeah. So when we catch what heaven's like, can we, that's the burden. Now, my life don't have these things, but I'm catching there's a promise here. There's a will and intent and purpose of God in my life for it to be like this, but it's not. Yeah. You're saying when you catch that, how it's going to be delivered yeah. by heaven is the host of heaven. And it's delivered by angels. Because but we got to catch a revelation. Exactly, exactly. You of, know, of God's will, his intent. You know, every, when you see Jesus in the wilderness fasting for 40 days, right? The Bible says that even though he was alone, but angels were with him. Yeah. Angels were ministering to his needs there. And when Satan came to tempt Jesus, and he failed the testing, as we know. The Bible right away says that angels showed up to minister to his need. He comes out now in the power that he did not manifest when he went in. So what, and now this is Christ now. What did he have, what happened when he came in? He went on a fast to be tempted, okay? He comes out in greater power. He experienced breakthrough that caused his ministry to become what he became. Okay? Now, the Bible says he went to the wilderness to be tempted of that devil. Right? So the wilderness in the moment was for his time of breakthrough. It wasn't really for him to fast, but it was for breakthrough. Okay? So here, when, he, when we see that he passed the test, that he was tested by Satan. When the angels come, the next thing you see is the manifestation of breakthrough. Because all breakthrough in the life of believers is, a, is delivered by angelic activity. Oh, Moses delivered the law, right? The finger of God wrote the law, right? But the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that the law was delivered by angels. Now, here comes, there was a community that was in chaos, not knowing what God wanted, going in circles, and suddenly Moses comes down with the law that brought breakthrough in their area that they need a breakthrough. Direction, stability, the way to follow, the path. This is it. You don't have to guess it no more. Here is the law. But the law was delivered by the hand of angels. Or even Moses getting direction to deliver Absolutely. Egypt, it says an angel Absolutely. was in the bush. Absolutely. But then it says the Lord spoke yeah. because they speak on behalf of. Absolutely. And this is a beautiful thing because true prophets and prophetic people, no, true prophets move by angelic help. Okay? And that's why you see in the Bible prophets associated with angels. Okay? Now, this is the beautiful thing. The Bible says like, and the Lord did this, yet the law was, it, it says it was written by the finger of God, but Hebrew says it was delivered by angels. Because it was God, like you said, but through the angel doing the manif So it was God, but it was, it was the angel, but it was God talking through them. So angels are just who deliver what God, God wants to do it because God directly from heaven don't throw it down. Well, it's the same with us as now the ecclesia, the church. Same thing. Whatever we do, we could say, well, God did that. Yet but it how was did God us, do but it, it was God. Yes. A same principle. So breakthrough, the anointing of the breaker 
it's not just something that hits you or, you know, it's, it's, a whole, it, it's a process to get breakthrough, but when breakthrough is going to be delivered, it's because there's an angelic activity that now has been involved in your life. Because are the angels that prepare the spirit world and fight the battles. Because remember, breakthrough is a result of winning a battle concerning an, an area of life. Okay, if you're sick in your body, you have cancer, you need breakthrough, you need the Lord to heal you. Well, there's in the spirit world, there's angels that are fighting and when the victory takes place, boom, you have the manifestation of the breakthrough you want to, but delivered by angels. Okay, so, and I know that for a fact because every time I minister, you see my meetings that I see the angels moving and it took me a while to understand, well, hold on, why isn't the Lord moving? Why do I need angels to move? But is the Lord moving? But the Lord is not going to get off his chair on heaven and come and talk here. You know, the angels do, do activities. Here in the, there's a story of a, a man that was crippled in the pool of Bethesda, right? Because even when it comes to healing, there are healing angels that people have no idea, yeah. okay? And here, Jesus goes to the pool of Bethesda and is sitting with a man that says, I've been waiting for so many years because there is an angel that comes. And when the angel stirs the water, whoever gets in there first gets breakthrough. Now, Jesus could have said, uh, 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 that's not from God. It is God that sends his power to heal you. But Jesus did not correct that. And Jesus went to a place that knew there was an angel that comes. But what is the lesson that I'm telling you here? That for in that pool, there was an angel of breakthrough for healing. And the first one that was fast enough to get in there... It, it will be by the stirring of the waters of the angel that they got healed. So there are certain healings that come by the hands of angels. And there are some healings that come because you activate your faith, some healing that comes because of, but there are certain levels of healings that only angels can release it to you. Now, we don't give glory to angels. You know, we understand. Because it was the Lord doing it. It was the Lord doing it for an angel. Like you preach, it Lord. was God talking to you, but it's your mouth talking. Yeah. Okay? So here, financial breakthroughs. Okay? Here comes uh, Elijah to the widow that was struggling financially. And Elijah speaks to the widow. And the miracle takes place. But it was the activity of angels that broke the spirit of poverty from the lady. So when the prophet was gone, there was a continuous resource of income coming in through the oil never going dry, through the flour never going dry. That's financial breakthrough, but it was activated by the angels that the prophet carried. So there's another element that, it, that caused the angels. I think angels are responding because of something that we do. Now, there's two parts. Elisha and the widow, they both had a part. He yeah. got a word from the Lord. Go to yeah. this woman. You'll yeah. find this woman. You're going to see her. She's going to be doing this. Gather and stick. You're going to say this to her. He obeys. So I want to talk yeah. about obedience, quick obedience, faith, our response of faith. So there's like, that's why I said knowledge, revelation, whether the word, whether it's rhema or Lego, logos that says, do this. And then we respond, quick obedience. He quick obeys. Then he says to the woman, hey, go make me. Da -da. She goes, yeah. I, I only have this much left. He says, that's fine. Make it for me first. Yeah. She quickly obeys. Boom. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Boom. Breakthrough. So Absolutely. speak to faith or quick yeah. obedience to the I, I, word of God. And I love this because first of all, when we understand. Because people want to, oh, when it's safe or I'm not sure. You know, no, no, no. There's an activation. Said, Do this. There's an activation, right? But what we said before was, that the activation and the manifestation of, of breakthrough comes by the hands of angels. You have to understand that, okay? And also, breakthrough is part of prophetic anointing. Yeah. Because it is prophets that bring breakthrough. It is prophetic that causes breakthrough. Heaven speaking. Exactly. Because prophetic is all about the voice of God. Voice. Nothing to do with the man. It has to do with the voice of God, okay? When heaven speaks, there's breakthrough. That, that's all throughout the scripture. But now... How do you get the voice of God to be activated? How do I get angels to come and move? Just angels move and they're going to show up? No. Number one is number one is hearing the voice of God. What is God telling you about your condition? Prophet Elijah to the widow, cook the meal and give it to me. He could have said, my son, my son is hungry. But he, she obeyed the voice of God. Breakthrough came. Okay, so number one is obedience to the direction that God gives you concerning your breakthrough. Financially, I have learned, and I'm sure you have also, most of the time to see a financial breakthrough, God will not always ask you to pray. He will ask you to give. 
Yet people have a problem. Here we go. You want money again? Just go pray. Well, people are praying, but prayer is the wrong key when it comes to finances. It's giving that opens the portals. So, you know, here there's obedience and people fight it. goes, we're not going to do this. We're just going to pray. Well, that's cute, but then you see that nothing happens. So it's the response when it comes to financial breakthrough. I know God's always going to speak to me to give something. So I'm paying attention for it. It is hard to obey, but that's the key. So when you say pay attention, now you're talking about timing. Now, I'm talking about timing and I'm talking about willingness. Because if God were to tell me right now, you believe me for this, like I shared about my house, right? I had to sow a $500 seat to see my house sold for a ridiculous price, higher than what it's worth. But when the Lord says, sow that $500 seat, I could have said, uh, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm in Orlando. I'm just going to sow $100 to my church. So I want to I want to unlock this because you're, yeah. you're actually alluding to something that the people don't know, but you and I talked about. So your your you your wife wants a set, a different house than the one you yeah. currently have. It yeah. costs more than the one you have. Yeah, much more. So then you go, okay, well, I can sell my house, but I only have like two hundred fifty thousand of what the market says in value in it. I want three hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah of value in it. So you say, okay, not yet. But then a season goes and then God says, now. Yep. Timing. Yep. The word, but the word came with, the, you're entering but, in exactly. now time. But this is a beautiful Kairos, thing. Kairos, yeah. take it now. The, the word came to me to increase the price when the market for housing is going down. Yeah. So that's like totally defies all logic. So that's faith is involved. Faith. Believing. But believing the voice because when I came from Venezuela and I'm driving in the car, the Lord says, now sell the house, put the price. So I right away, I told my wife, we're selling the house. We're going to make this price $100,000 higher than any other house in the neighborhood. And she said, the market is bad. Realtor says, this cannot happen. You will not sell it past this price. This just makes no sense. But I understood my obedience would release the angels to bring me the breakthrough. Because angels are moved by obedience to God. Angels don't move outside of you obeying God. That's just the way it is. Yeah. Okay? So when I obey God and I say, we're going to do it, and I told the realtor, sell it for this price, and they say, you will never sell it. The economy is down. It's not, I say, you do what I'm telling you to do. Okay? My obedience began to release it. But then I, knowing the principles, got a seed. And I planted it in the hand of a prophet, like I mentioned, in South America. And that thing activated something. So you didn't necessarily hear God say, plant a seed. You already understand. I understood the principle. That principle. Because some things. Sometimes we want God to speak. He's like, I told yeah. you that well, years well, ago. in reality, God spoke. <laughs> okay. But he spoke through his principle. Yeah. So there's times that we all want a voice to talk to our ears. But man, the word is the voice of God written in paper. Yeah. So, so don't always Which you just, had learned that principle years ago. You should, I mean, when you know the Bible, the Bible will talk to you. Because the Bible is the voice of God. Okay, so when people say, well, I know the Bible, but I want God to talk to me. It's like, I don't think you understand the word. Yet God still talks supernaturally. But man, the Bible is, is, is the number one voice in, in which God communicates. So I knew the principle and the principle spoke to me. Hmm. Which the principle speaking to me is God speaking to me. And you had quick obedience, you went and did it. I jumped. I, I, uh, the moment that God spoke to me on the front row, uh, Tom, I got up. The, the prophet was preaching. And I got up and I said, I have a seat right now. I interrupted him because I knew now I have to do it. I didn't wait an hour later for the offering. It was now. And I stood up and he goes, oh, I said, this is my house. He prayed nice prayer and left. But I knew what I was doing. I was activating the angelic world. So here I come back to Orlando. Now I knew it's going to happen. I, I will tell my wife and the realtor, I know it's going to happen. Why? Because I followed the steps that guarantee breakthrough. Many was a month two later. You heard the story that just Friday, uh, a few days ago from here, when I landed here, the realtor says, "There's a family that is willing to give you what you ask for." Wow, crazy! But that was my breakthrough. Deliver. Listen, the angels brought that family hmm. to me. Every other family that came see the house, they go like, "We'll give you a hundred thousand, one fifty less," and I say, "Keep on walking." And here comes a family with a need and with the money. And they said, we love your house. And they said, we're willing to give you this. Mm -hmm. And it was exactly what I asked for. And I got my breakthrough. Come on. Okay, so there's obedience, 
There's hearing his voice, obedience to his voice, acting in faith now. Faith is not like, okay, Lord, uh, the Lord is telling me to give Pastor Tom this coffee. Well, Lord, I'll give it to him, you know, uh, when I'll come back next month. Because then that is disobedience. Timing is. I jump and I say, Tom, here's a coffee. <laughs> Because faith requires you for you to jump in the right timing. Because faith in the right timing opens a portal. And that's what, you know, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is. Meaning the time for faith is now. It's not when you feel like it. Or people says, well, let me just get a confirmation. <laughs> no, then you missed it. I'd rather be wrong acting in faith than being wrong waiting for faith to confirm. So you're in a plane, let's say, I'm just using the imagery for it, for the people. So, you know, your instructor says jump. You're, you're, you're doing a, a parachute jump. You, he says jump. What people want to do is, oh, are we at the right height? Are we... They want to question they, it. All the things. Has the backpack no. packed, all that? Yeah. No, that's what all supposed to be done. Yeah. And that instructor's job is to tell you now. And for you to trust, trust. that he knows what's going on. People say, well, how do I know it's God? Then, then, then don't approach a man of God inquiring from God if you don't trust that he hears from God. Which I just always challenge people. That's one of the first things you want to grow in. We have a video on that. Yeah. You and I talked about that, how to hear God's voice. Because, yeah. you know, you want 50 different promises fulfilled. Was all, none of them are going to be done without God's voice. So Absolutely. you need to understand that key, that yeah. principle, yeah. grow in that so that all these other things can be fulfilled. Not, not uh, Moses, not Abraham, not Noah, none of them fulfilled the promise of God in the, for their lives in their time without hearing God's voice. So you got to understand that. But we're trying to break down God's voice, timing, and then speak to relationship, association. Yeah, absolutely. Because a lot of people don't get, you know, something else, someone else is walking in a promise. They're like, I want to walk in that promise, but they don't understand the key absolutely. to breakthrough being association. Yeah, because the scripture says there's nothing new under the sun, right? So everything that is, was, what it will be, has been. You know, so, so no one on earth is going to get something from God that no one ever got it but me. So when people say, I have something that no one ever had before, I say, yeah, you, you're being cute about it. Somebody else, there's a million people that had it before. Yeah. Elijah, I'm the only one. No, there's 7,000, right? So when you learn that principle, you realize, okay, you know, in order for me to get breakthrough, I must be around people that are living breakthrough because breakthrough is contagious, The breakthrough on somebody else, it accelerates the force of your breakthrough. We see this principle throughout the scripture, okay? So one thing that I understood is association because I, if I come around somebody that has something, they have the ingredient to get me there. When you talk to me, why, why is it that people pay tens of thousands of dollars to sit down on a class of one hour with a guy that's, Rich daddy, poor daddy, whatever his name is. Why would you pay $10,000 for him to tell you something? Because you trust that if he got there, he can get me there. Yeah. Same principle in the spirit. We pay big money for some guy to tell you how to get wealthy, but then when it comes to church, you doubt God's servants. The same reason why you would pay someone who's a, a your workout. Uh, exactly. You yeah. want a trainer? Get somebody who's in shape. Don't get some chunky guy to train you how to be yeah. in shape. All right. So here, association, what happens? Association causes what somebody else tap into it to force you and to push you faster towards what you're looking for. Okay. So when I learned that principle was find out if I want financial breakthrough, I'm being financially stable. Let me find people that reach there, are there, so I can get the keys from them of how I can be like they are. And it takes humility because we all want God to give it to us, not to anybody else. But you understand that, that God has done it for somebody, he will do it for you, okay? So when I found that key, I began to look for people that are living breakthrough, not that are preaching, that are living it. Mm. And what I do is I come around them and I say, okay, I, I, just being around them, asking questions, watching, do what they do. How do you do this? I sow a seed. I'm going to sow a seed. Mm. 
What else did you do? I went up on the, mount, on the mountain and jumped three times. I'm going on the mountain and jumping three times. Because what happens is it saves you time for you to discover keys that they already discovered in years of thinking. So association brings acceleration. Okay? Elijah and Elisha, the principle of association. My guy, he, he got a double portion of the mantle that would have taken him a lifetime to get because he was around somebody that paid a price for a lifetime to get something that he got in a few years. So hearing the voice of God, obedience, faith, being around those. If you, if you need something, find somebody who's living it and get close to them. Learn the keys. Receive that thing, that spirit that they carry and you'll see that your process will accelerate. So these are small keys that will get you to the place faster than you having to discover everything on your own because what well, you can get on 20 years, you can get it in two years. So for example, I'm going to give my own example. So um, this last year, going back to kind of when I talk about breakthrough, I'm looking at something I feel my spirit I'm supposed to do for my life. You have things on your lives, on, on your life, that you feel you're supposed to do. So I felt like, okay, so I'm, I'm going to write books. I have uh, schools and ministries around the world, and I want to use, I want everything to be from, from our family, our own books, our own uh, materials. Do I want to write one book? I could pay several thousand dollars to go through the process. It takes a long time. I'm just another name in this company's publishing company's uh, um, portfolio of people that they're doing books for. And so I'm just on a list and they'll get to me. Or what I felt was to write a bunch of books. Well, I don't want to be just a number in the whole thing. So I felt that burden. So what I did, I found someone who uh, I felt led to associate with who, one, has a grace for writing. Uh, he's written 200 books. So I said, okay, I'm going to fly out. I had to fly across the country. Flew across the country, met him. He also has uh, apostolic hubs all over the world. And I said, I feel called to do that. So I want to I wanna associate with this person. I want to get close to this person. So I, I find someone that knows him, that I'm already friends with. They connect me. One, that's a key right there. Just <laughs> So... Then I fly out, spend my own money, cost me something, spend time with them, ask them questions, get that relational connection, leave, and now um, that, 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 that connection's been made. Then there was someone else that has, they have a publishing company. That's what I want. So then I go and I connect with that person. So I'm... Li I'm, I'm these are natural things. People do this in business and real estate and all kinds of stuff. So sometimes we get so spiritual that we don't know. Actually, some of these things seem so natural because it's just how God designed them. There is a spiritual principle, but even the world is picking up on them. Like some of the wealthiest people in the world are picking up on things that are actually the hakmah, that's the Hebrew word for wisdom. It's the wisdom of God. God they just happen to pick it up pick up on it. So we can get so spiritual that we don't realize some of it's so low in hanging in fruit that you should pick up this, this revelation. So if I want to plant churches, I'm going to go and find some, hey, this guy's planted 50 churches. You know, I went to, to university and some of my professors, it's just all head knowledge. They've never done any of exactly. it. Exactly. So I said, okay, I'm paying $2,000 a class to learn something from someone, I'm not even sure if they know anything except they put a good outline together. I don't know if they know how to manifest what they're teaching. So I, I to be honest, begin to, I'm like, I could have gave two grand to someone who's actually manifesting it for a lunch and got more <laughs> real actual knowledge from this person than from this, Absolutely. this person. So, Absolutely. so that's what I begin to do. And that's what's caused... With Walk in the Light, we, we have a nonprofit, uh, you know, doing crazy amounts of work. And whether it's we have hospitals, schools, 
businesses, for profits, nonprofit. We have all this stuff going on with that. Well, what I did was I found people who were already doing it, and I associated with them, and they gave me ridiculous amounts of wisdom, to be honest, for free, because they were just surprised that a young person had those questions, and they love that. You know, there's there's something about, you know, if a 13 year old asks you a powerful question, you 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 almost more prompt to want to give them the answer than a 60 year old. Because you're just you're kind of profound that the fact that they're that's a wonderful question, young man. Boom. So so um that that association, like I said, we 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 can get so spiritual that we don't realize. Elisha, in his being known as the one who washed the hands of Elijah, he got something that none of the other prophets were able to get because he understood this association. Yeah, exactly. So to the level of that association will also cause a certain level of your um, coming up. But I, I love that. So, so catching, catching what, what it is you, you, for me, I'll catch a burden for something that writing books or whatever it is, I'll go read a couple things on it first, to be honest. I'll go educate myself. I feel a promise from God that I'm supposed to do that. What people do is go, oh, I'm going to write a book someday. They don't do anything. No, I went and read a bunch of stuff, watched some stuff, how to write books. Blah, 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 blah. So I'm not just this level when I'm asking an author questions. They're like, well, you're wasting my time. You could have watched a 10-minute video on YouTube and not ask me stupid questions. So I'm going to get myself a certain level of education. Then I go and ask them where I still, my answers are, are my, I still have a blurry area. Boom, they're like, that's a great question. Now they're like, no, you didn't, you didn't waste my time. You have a really great question because all the stuff I read didn't answer this question. They go, man, I want to give you my time. And then they, they, they press in because of the quality of, man, that you're, you're someone that's really actually searching. And people want to answer. Jesus had that. People yeah. who came and asked him questions, he goes, I got the whole crowd here. And you, that's a great question. Let me answer that question. So, but I'm talking about it's with wealth. It's with health. It's with the spirit. You want to prophesy. You want to hear God's voice. You want to walk in miracles. Find someone that's doing it. One, study it in the word of God. Begin to uh, associate with people who do it. I wanted to cast out devils. Well, great. I just found someone who's cast out devils and asked them, I don't understand why you know it's this, that, and another thing. They answered it. And all of a sudden, I begin to just take what I understood and activate it. And all of a sudden, I had more questions because of what didn't, 50% of it worked and 50% of it didn't. Now I got, I got five questions. I used to have 10. You answered those five. I'm doing that now. This didn't. And all of a sudden, people weren't, it wasn't a demon. It was healing. Then I had to go learn from about healing. What, what, what releases healing? Boom, activated that key by reading a bunch of books and then finding people who were operating in it. Boom, now healing's operating. Then it was like, oh, not everything is, Physical, he, physical healing, sometimes it's the soul. Well, what? how do I take healing and not just apply it to the elbow or the spinal cord? How do I apply it to the soul now? Boom, found the key because I asked questions and found people who are operating. So, but I see what ought to be because of the word of God. And then I ask questions and I pursue it until it's a manifestation. And I don't think you possess it until you can walk in it on a regular basis. Meaning, you know, if I own an apple tree, when it's in season, I can eat from it whenever I want. But if it's someone else's apple tree, I don't get to eat from it whenever I want. I get to eat from their apple tree, but it's not mine. So I have to go and ask them, hey, can I, you know, have an apple? I want for you, we want for you, for you to possess something so much that you can eat from it all the time. I love that in Revelation, he said that in every season, the, the, the trees are just, in every season, that's the promise, is that you want to operate in wealth. If you really understand the keys, it can be a down market and the wealthy who possess the keys actually make money. You know that? So, so we want you to, to learn these keys. One, God's voice, God's promise, being burdened, being quick response to it, knowing God will back up his word with his angels. They'll bring it. But this, this last key that I wanted you to get, that association. Some of you are too proud to go and find someone and ask questions. 
You're too busy telling them what you know instead of asking them questions because you have identified what you don't know and being okay with. You don't have it yet, but I will. And God doesn't favor men. He's going to give it to me. So on that, because I wanted it to be kind of a quick um, uh, broadcast, is there anything else connected to just the, these keys of breakthrough that is still in you that you want to, re- to just say to the people? You know, uh, we gave some, you know, important keys, but I think also it's the timing. Mm. You know, be sensitive of the, of the timing because to the degree that you're willing to wait for the timing, it will be the amount of breakthrough you're going to get. Mm. So don't get nothing before it's time. Okay, because if you get it before it's time, it will be premature, so it will not be to the level of intensity you want in a breakthrough. Yeah, if you're not at the level of maturity and you try to step into exactly. something too early, you're going to, yeah. Exactly. You, won't you know, be able and to I really think those are the it. basics, you know. I mean, we can go with so many other things, but these are the basics of what people need to see breakthrough. Which most people aren't the activating basics. those basics. Exactly. Once you get in those basics, then we can talk about little bunny trails to great things, but really it's just like discern the voice of God on something and take it, act on faith on it. Okay, be obedient, of course, to the voice of God, act on faith, and you will see that avenue opening up for you to get on the first steps of what it takes to go towards breakthrough. Yeah, if you want to drive NASCAR, just learn how to drive a car first. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> you know, the principles will translate. You have absolutely. to get more fine absolutely. in detail. Yeah. But absolutely. the principles first, you don't just get into exactly. a NASCAR, you're going to die. So. But, but one, if I could emphasize this before we finish, is this. Hearing the voice of God and acting on what he says is the highest, number one, most important Walking thing. in the spirit. Yeah. Because if you hear God tells you something and you don't act on it right away, that voice will pass you by. Yeah. So you have to act on it and the success, that's the beginning. Be, be, without that, none of the other keys will work. So I, I, this is what came to my spirit is Moses, he's walking by the bush and something catches him. I mean, he's in the spirit. Where I'm going to use it as a spiritual imagery. He's physical, but I'm going to use it as a reflection of spiritual things. Something catches his eye, and it says, when he turned aside, yeah. God spoke. So, meaning when we live a life in the spirit, we're walking, we're, we're spending time. If you don't spend time in the spirit, learning how to hear, especially when you're young, it, you don't have to, it's important that you do it for the rest of your life, but you have to learn how to get in the spirit first. For those of you who don't hear God's voice, one of the key on-ramps to the breakthrough of hearing God's voice is to be honest, is prayer, fasting, praying in the tongues, those reading the word, those things are the on-ramp. You should be doing that. I'm teaching my kids at, at, at 12, 13, and 14 to do those things. They already have dreams, visions, they're having the, and they have to ask questions about them. I had this dream about this person. This is going on. I go, wow, it's exactly what's going on in their life. But they're children, but they're, they're practicing yeah. things that you if, you, if you're 50 and you just met God, you practice those same things, it'll turn it on. It, so you might not have to spend as much time, prophet, doing those things because you've already learned exactly. the spirit. Exactly. But someone who's not learned how the spirit, the honest truth to any lukewarm Absolutely. believer if you start reading your Bible, you start praying in the Spirit, you start praying just in words you understand, use the Spirit to begin to ha- understand supplication, intercession, Absolutely. begin to understand praise, begin to understand those are simple principles yeah. of, the, of learning how to turn on yeah. the Spirit and walk in the Spirit. Then you'll start hearing God's voice. Yeah. So, so, you know, you want to do miracles, you want to do... No, that... You're gonna make a mess if you if you learn the keys to healing and deliverance and those things without learning the keys to walking in the spirit. Yeah, you're gonna make a mess, Absolutely. and that's why many people make a mess is because they didn't learn first how to walk in the spirit. Now I give you a sword, but you you don't know what God what would what would please God's heart when you when you use that. So you're hacking people instead of healing people. A scalpel can kill and heal, and so the spirit will tell you how to do that. 
And so that's just my first, that's what I said at the beginning of this, this broadcast is, is if you don't first learn how to live a life of the spirit leading, then, you know, then all these other things, you'll, you'll possess wealth, but it'll ruin you. You'll, you'll, you know, you can possess things that God intended to be a blessing to you that ruin you. And so if you first fall in love with God, first begin to, to, to desire more than anything, to fear God and walk in his spirit, then he'll begin to show you things he wants to do in and through your life that'll be a blessing to you. Absolutely. They'll bless you, not ruin you. So. And you know what, Tom? Once the initial breakthrough, it seems longer, harder, and difficult. Yes. <laughs> But once you got You broke through that. The next one is easier, easier, and then it becomes a lifestyle of breakthrough. Come on. But it's the first one, the one that you have to really focus and boom, push through it. And then the rest, it just comes like this. Come on. Because you learn the pattern of the spirit. Come on. Which you can go back and watch that uh, on, on this channel. You, we, uh, with you, you and I talked about you know, the, 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 the hearing and living by the spirit. Um, and so challenge you to go back to that. If you don't have that, if you feel like, man, I don't hear God's voice, you got to master that first. Yeah. I, I don't want you to have wealth and then you, you just do it with the flesh. You want to become first a person of the spirit. Then God can give you these other things and they won't Absolutely. corrupt you. They won't ruin you. It'll heal your marriage. It'll heal. You'll become a prophet to your own life. We talk about that. Absolutely. Because you know, yeah, the spirit of God is the spirit of prophecy, which is Christ. He'll lead you, guide you. You'll begin to reflect him. So it's so good. So um, I just want to end on that. Would you pray I, for the people? I love it. Lord, we pray right now that everyone that's listening to our voice, that you will help them to get into the breakthrough they need that they will experience and know the voice of God and that they'll be willing to jump, to obey. And the breakthroughs will begin to manifest in every area of their lives. In the name of Jesus, we release the angels that have facilitate breakthrough to come forth right now over your life. In the name of Jesus, it is done. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Amen. Just say this. Amen.